Hi there viewers, in this video I'll be looking at Cartoon Animator 5, specifically the new content library management tool, and we'll take a quick look at modifying your characters using the new SVG color adjustment tools. Hi there, I'm David Arundel, otherwise known as the Extraordinary Tourist, or sometimes the Lazy Animator. And this particular video is a kind of continuation on from my last video in which I showed you how to modify your existing characters bought from Real Illusions content library and marketplace. Since that video, which was done in Cartoon Animator 4, Cartoon Animator 5 has been released. And with that comes a whole new content library manager, which is very different to Cartoon Animator 4. So I thought we'd take a quick look at that just to show you the differences and where to find everything. And then we're going to take a quick look at the new SVG G3 characters and how you can modify them using the new SVG color adjustment tool. So let's get straight into it and into Cartoon Animator 5. So if you're not familiar with Cartoon Animator 5 at all, this is the Real Illusions page on their website for the software. If you can't draw or you've never animated, this is definitely the ideal software for you to get started in 2D animation. Uh, there's plenty of content in Real Illusions content store and their marketplace that you can make use of in your own animations for both personal and commercial use. And a lot of the tools are designed to make animation really easy and they'll sort of grow with you as you get more advanced with the program. But it's quite capable of some very professional looking animation. So let's get right into this. Uh, what you're looking at here on the left of your screen, on the left half of your screen, is Cartoon Animator 4 and its original content manager that it's had since the beginning. And on the right hand side of your screen is Cartoon Anim Animator 5 and you'll see here is the brand new content manager. And what you'll notice right away is that the new content manager has sort of got a few more things in it. Uh, in here we've got a search function, which people have been asking for for ages. Uh, instead of just the item list Cartoon Animator 4 has, you've also got viewing things by packs. So you can see everything that you've purchased in both the content, content store and marketplaces based on the actual packs that you've bought and you can search through the packs and this also allows you to download your content directly from the store no more having to install stuff through a link on the website anything new that you buy from the store will automatically show up in here as a new purchase and it'll be grayed out until you double click on it and download it so at all times your account sort of stays active with your online account I put that back to all but the other major change is you'll notice cartoon animator 4 here has these tabs down the side for project actor animation scene sfx prop and elastic motion whereas this one doesn't have it these have been replaced across the top with these icons so this is project actor we've got accessories animation and we've got the scene and you'll notice when I click on these, you'll get these subsections and these relate to these folders down here. So you've got human actor, animals, spine. And if I click on these, you'll see down here changes with that as well. And it also works on the item side. If I go to item, and I've got clicked human actor, it will be selected there and all this will be all the human actor stuff. And I can go further into these clicking in those but that's generally the biggest change between the content manager we don't have the little plus sign now we've got the save button at the bottom and obviously template is all your purchase stuff and custom is all of the stuff that you make yourself or add into the program from somewhere other than the content store or the marketplace but one thing you'll notice in this, which you can do over in Cartoon Animator 4, is if you go to the Actor tab, you've got the Head folder here, and you can see all of your heads, character heads that you have saved. Uh, the new Content Library Manager doesn't have that. You can't access heads 
from stage mode. So in my last video I showed you how you could take a character and just replace the head in stage mode. Uh, you can no longer do that anymore. Uh, there is no head folder in here. Uh, you have to actually go into the composer to swap character heads now, which is an extra step, but uh, for this much better organization, I'm sort of more than happy to put up with that. So I'll put a character on the stage. We get one of the new characters that come with Cartoon Animator 5. I need a character to be open to go into the character composer. And you'll notice all of these characters have G3 on them with this little sort of symbol with the two squares and the curved line. That indicates that the character is a vector-based character, not a raster-based character. So these particular characters, you can zoom in and they're resolution independent. They won't pixelate uh, when you zoom in close on them in your animations. And you'll notice some of the packs from Cartoon Animator 4, which used to be raster-based, have also been turned into vectors. So some of these characters that were released with Cartoon Animator 4 are now vector characters as well. And you also see some other little icons on here. I believe this triangle here indicates that this is a front-facing character. This triangle here indicates that it's a side-facing character. Uh, the top one indicates it's an actor file. This little spring indicates that the character has uh, the new spring bone system applied to it in various parts. So maybe if it's got spring bones happening in the hair or in an outfit or something, that'll show up in there too. But I'm going to open this guy, move on to the workspace, and I think I'll open up a character in here as well. You see these are the old characters in Cartoon Animator 4. These ones are raster-based, not vector-based. Put Martha on the stage, and I'll open up the composer in both of these. So you see here in composer mode now, uh, both characters have got the bones, which indicates we're in composer. And you'll see the tabs here have changed to actor, head, body, and prop. Whereas over here, it looked like not much happened, but in actual fact the tabs across the top have changed. And you'll see we've got actor, this is where the head file is, so if I click on heads, all of the heads that I have will come up, and all of these subfolders... So if I go head over here, you see you've got the subfolders, face, brow, eye, morph, eye, nose, mouth, ear, and all that. All of that is now in icons below the head folder up here. So I've got that. I've got face, brow, eye, morph, eye, nose, mouth, morph, mouth, or morph, teeth, ear, and hair. And we've also got a hands folder here with all the different hands coming up. And an accessories folder, which is separated into head accessories, body accessories, and just everything else. So that's how they differ, but generally they work the same. You can swap heads just by dragging a new head onto the character. So uh, if I wanted this guy, I don't know his name, to have a different head, I can just say grab Philip's head, drag it out here, say yes, I want to replace that. And that gives them a new head. Be able to just enlarge that. And there we go. It's just as simple. It just means to replace heads, we have to come into the character composer. I'm going to undo that. Get this back. There we go. So that's just a quick comparison of the two character composers. It's not hugely different. It's just the content library manager has got a few more things. And instead of these tabs down the side, if you want to look across the top. Uh, you can actually collapse this menu across the top if you prefer to go through the folders on the side here. You just click that little icon and that'll get rid of it. Uh, I like to have it open because I find it's a fast way of moving between all the folders without having to scroll as much. And again, you can swap between items and packs when you're looking for things or you've got the search function up here. And you can obviously order your packs into different lists whether you want oldest first or alphabetical or whatever as well but now i'm just going to have a quick look at the svg color adjustment tool and how you can use it to modify some of the new characters that come with cartoon animator 5 and also the characters that you can purchase in the dynamic character designer so 
I'm going to close this up, get out a Cartoon Animator 4. So these new characters that come with Cartoon Animator 5, in this first pack that you can see here, you've got, if they've got names, is Ariel is the girl, and the guy's name is Johnny. So this is Johnny. Uh, they all have the new SVG color adjustment features attached to them. And I'm just going to open up this cat version of Johnny, which sort of illustrates how these features work. I'll put him there. I'll move to the middle and get nice and large so we can see this. Right, so this is template Johnny. And what this is showing you is all the areas of color in his outfit that you can adjust to make variations on whatever character is wearing at the time. So you can see here he's got a hoodie, long pants, short sleeves, and what have you. And here you can see the hoodie, but it's slightly opaque. And you've got all these different colors that allow you to do different lengths of pants and sleeves as well. I'm not sure whether you need to be in the composer. Let's do this. We, can't, we don't actually need to be in the composer to do this. So what you can see here is I've opened up the SVG color adjustment palette, uh, which is this icon over here. And you'll see that his character is divided into folders of clothing and character. And you'll see if I open up these folders, we've got mouth, skin tone, hair, eyebrow. And so if I keep going deeper on skin tone, we've got skin tone for the leg, the head, the torso, and the arm. We're still in folders here. If I keep going even deeper, say, on the leg, we get down to line and fill for the leg. And you'll see here, these are the colors for the fill on his leg and the line on his leg. Uh, things that aren't right down to this level where it's at the actual drawing, where it's a folder, you'll get this gradient. But all of these, you can actually use these sliders at the bottom here to make adjustments to this character. So if I wanted to, I can go to clothing and you'll see now that that's selected, all of this clothing is flashing, indicating uh, that all of these colored areas are inside that folder and can be adjusted by adjusting these settings here. So if I wanted to, I could take out the saturation on all of his clothing in just one swoop by adjusting the saturation down here to minus 100 and now all his clothing has had all of the saturation taken out of it do all the brightness take all that out make all his clothing black and take all the contrast out and do the hue and you can see all of that just by adjusting these sliders we'll get him back to his template colors there we go so if I didn't want to do everything at once, I can go down into his outfit. An outfit, by the looks of it, is his hoodie. We open up the hoodie, we go face, collar. You'll notice the opacity for his hoodie is on 50%. If I get out of that and just click on unknown, you see the hoodie, as I said, you can only half see. If you wanted to put that and make it completely so we can see it, we just adjust this one. And now his hoodie is completely the same as this character. So this is basically how the color adjustment works. Uh, it's not going to work the same on every single character. These characters have been specifically designed so that you can adjust the length of their sleeves and stuff through color. Uh, it all depends on whoever developed the character as to how they do this color management system. Sometimes it might be set up just so that you can change the color of the clothing. Uh, but because these characters have been set up to try and give you as many options as possible with the types of clothes that they wear, uh, you've got all these different sleeve lengths and stuff to contend with as well. So let's switch over to this character and I'll show you how we can completely change his outfit. So if we wanted to, we could uh, completely remove this top by going setting the opacity to zero so now he doesn't have a hoodie get out of that and we go into his top see that's all of those colors there at the moment I get back to unknown unknown is just anything that's not part of a color group uh, if i wanted to give this top long sleeves we just go into here and select the sleeves you'll notice on this one the opacity is turned all the way off so all we need to do is turn it on 
now we've got those sleeves go into this one you notice the opacity is all the way off so i can turn them on sleeve three again the opacity is off sleeve four opacity now this character has long sleeves and let's say if i wanted to put him in short so i could then go down here the opacity on is on four on leg five which is for both his shins so we can turn that off now that's got him in short pants there if we turn those off and we bring these ones on and there we go now we've got him wearing shorts so essentially to make this stuff work you have to really explore these folders and try and work out what it is you need to adjust there's all these settings here you can of course like if i wanted to change the color on everything there i could just do this and go okay now the color for his leg is that and then because that's not matching his hip i'll go into the hip and select the color there and the easiest way to match it is to just pick a screen color there we go we go okay now his hips matching with his pants there pant legs so it's not just clothes you can do as you saw we've got a character in here so we can adjust all of the skin tones so so if we wanted to give him a bit more of a tan perhaps make him a bit darker skinned a bit more orange a little less contrast there we go it's really easy to do just with a couple of slide slider adjustments and of course you can just save that character out so there you go that is the svg color adjustment tool i just wanted to give you a quick look at how that worked and how you can use it to Play around with some of the new SVG characters. It only works on SVG characters and props. At least I'm, I haven't tried it with props yet, but I'm fairly certain it would work with props as well, uh, so long as they're SVG props. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can't use it with bitmap characters, so we'll just confirm that for ourselves and get a character that I know is definitely a raster-based character. So let's get this character you saw me make in the previous video. As you can see, the SVG editor is greyed out, so we can't actually do any colour changes on him uh, using this tool. Uh, it's exclusively for the new SVG characters. So I'm going to leave that there. I hope you enjoyed this quick overview of the new content library manager and the new SVG colour adjustment feature for svg characters and props uh, it's an interesting tool uh, it's not always going to uh, work exactly like that with characters it depends on how developers have set up their characters as to how that tool is going to work with them uh, but those particular characters are designed to try and maximize the number of outfits that you can give them using the color adjustment tool so that's it for this video until the next one, I guess I'll see you later. Bye for now.